Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, my very biased collection, of course, as usual. Um, today I would like to talk about a funny algorithm, a really, really uh, great algorithm, actually, um, Karatsuba's algorithm. And it's really the slogan that something is faster than expected. We'll see what that is. I don't want to spoil the story immediately. So let me just jump right into it, actually. It's it's really wonderful. And it's kind of in this intersection of, well, computer science and mathematics, if you want. And maybe it's actually running right now in the background. Um, probably not, but who knows? Uh, we'll see in uh, what it is. So I really want like to talk about classical multiplication of polynomials. For example, I would like to multiply the polynomial x minus three, which I put here, and the polynomial four x minus five that I put here, and I call this grid multiplication, classical multiplication, whatever you want to call it. But all of you probably know how that works. So you multiply now x with this, and you get this. You multiply minus three with, well, this one here, and you get this. You multiply uh, what is another color x here with minus five, you get this. And the final minus three times minus five, I guess, is 50. And then you're essentially done. You just need to add them up correctly. Okay. So let's count. We had, well, it's kind of a grid. Uh, so if you think about a grid, then uh, one side is n. So I order things by um, the kind of the degree of the polynomial here, degree zero part, degree one part. So in total, I have n side lengths n and side lengths n. So I have n squared multiplications. So here's the degree th two, one and degree two, one. Um, note here that the off by one error, I'm starting counting at degree zero. So a degree two polynomial has length three. So, and then you can see clearly here, nine entries, right? It's n squared. And then you have a few additions that you can actually count. It's not so difficult to count. You have, uh, but it's, I count subtraction as addition in this whole video. So whether you subtract or add, that's the same for me. Anyway, so you have n squared multiplications, which is really just saying that we have a rectangle. Very, very simple. And you have n minus one squared, um, uh, what is it, additions. And if you ignore constants, then if you add those two, you get roughly uh, ignoring constants n squared operations that you need. Right, so you would have two n squared, but ignoring constants anyway. Um, and what people do in this case is to, they just write something is in capital Omicron of n squared. Just a comment here if you've seen this notation before. It's sometimes called capital O or big O notation. That's a little bit misleading. So in the original kind of uh, setup of Landau and Bachmann, they had Greek letters, they had a theta. Um, they had an omega and they had an omicron. Turns out that the omicron just looks like an O. And uh, so that get, those get known as capital O in the end. Anyway, we can ignore that. What it really means is the following. So um, F is in capital O of G. I have two functions F and G in a second. If the following happens, so my function G does something, I don't know. So here's G times a constant. So constant is what I'm going to ignore because I can just put it here. And I have my function f that does some crazy stuff we don't know. And eventually from one point onward and zero, uh, f will be below g. And that's then this notation. So this is supposed to be in an Omicron, okay? So if at from one point onward, it doesn't matter what happened before, your function is smaller than a constant times the other function, then you are in O of n. And here we have uh, the counting here gives something like 2n plus some other crap. The other crap, you can ignore that. So my function eventually is in O of n. And it really appears because this is kind of, how would you multiply polynomials? You put them in a grid and you multiply them, right? That's exactly what happens here. So it looks like there's no way you can do this in any faster form. You need to put them in a grid and you need to multiply them. And Kolmogorov had this conjecture that you really can't do any better. And Kolmogorov is a really big name in kind of early days of computer science and complexity theory. So if Kolmogorov conjectures that you can't do any better, um, that's kind of a good hint to that you can't do any better. So this multiplication, by the way, is really classical in the sense that it goes back I mean, a long time. So usually old Egypt is quoted here um, inventing uh, who have invented those 
this grid multiplication, but it might be even older. Anyway, so classical polynomial multiplication O of n squared, because it's a grid, and kind of people conjecture that you can't do any better. Horribly were they wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I can't even blame them. But to me, it looks like you can't do better. But you can. You can do much better, actually, in a very, very strange way. And that's kind of a surprising one. So here is the algorithm of Karatsuba. And bear with me here. The algorithm is completely crazy. So don't do that by hand. It's just absolutely bogus. So uh, nobody would do that in some sense. So you want to multiply here AXB plus CXD. And what you do is, OK, so we could kind of count this in that picture. We calculate calculate A times, uh, what is it, C, which is this arrow here. A times C gets us A times C. That's one multiplication. I count multiplications here, one multiplication. Uh, here, B times D gives me one extra multiplication. Good. Fine. And now I count additions as well. So we add, add A and B, and we add C and D, so two additions. And we multiply A, B, and C, D, which is our third multiplication. Again, this is completely bonkers. You wouldn't do that. Anyway, so you have A, C, and you have B, D, which are, of course, your leading coefficients in the extension. So this part is fine, but kind of the, the standard arrangement that you would do here to get the middle coefficient is now done in a really cre crazy way, right? So because you can now add another addition in this direction, those two that you have already computed, and can then subtract them another one here to get the coefficient you want. Okay, so you get three multiplications and four additions, which is seven operations in total. Right before we needed, so this is a two by two case, we needed four multiplications and just one addition, so we had five in total. So this crazy multiplication increases the number of operations needed. So it's it's very strange. It's like, you wouldn't do that. You need more steps. So why on earth do, do you care? It, it doesn't look very great, right? So you need more steps and it's essentially impossible to remember. Um, but the point is, and that's kind of where this whole business comes in that I'm going to explain in a second, which is called divided poker, that those guys actually don't matter. Well, additions won't matter. Because in the end, you're multiplying and you have decreased the multiplication steps from the grid, which is four to three. And that's great because now you have only three multiplication steps. So what you will do is you will re repeatedly call the same multiplication. Right? So you want to multiply now, this is just a two by two case. Now you would want, would want to multiply a really large rectangle type object um, and you do it the two by two case here, the two by two case here, the two by two case here, the two by two case here. And each one of them just called three multiplications. You save a lot of a lot of uh, steps, actually. The point is, if you just recursively call the same program now, but you have reduced the number of steps, and kind of it will explode exponentially as a number of uh, steps, you kind of simplify that. And here's an example how we do it. We just do it in an example. So let's say we want to multiply f and g, which is now degree four polynomial. Keep in mind that we have this off shift by one and f is g. So what we do is we split it into a degree two part and a degree two part. So here's my picture. I have some uh, computation I need to do and I cut it into two pieces. And then I repeat and cut the pieces into pieces. And I call again the pieces into pieces into pieces into pieces. And that whole process is called divide and conquer. So, right, because you have something divided it and then you use it, uh, you call the same program again. So here we have divided it into two pieces. And now we can just uh, do the operations for the smaller ones because we can just multiply those guys, which are now degree two objects. So we need seven operations. And you just do that and you kind of calculate to the end that you then need 23 operations compared to the classical multiplication, which would need 25 operations. So always in the first step, always in the first step, you have saved a few operations and it will kind of continue all the way down. So if you have really large polynomials, you just do it. And uh, yeah, you will just be ridiculously much faster. I have a very nice picture uh, in a second, but let me just do it again here. The point is that I have my little cake that I need to compute. I cut it into two and I save one operation per step. 
And now I just run my uh, algorithm on the smaller pieces and I've saved already operations. But how my algorithm works is it would cut the pieces into pieces and then save operations, then cut the pieces into pieces and save operations and cut the pieces into pieces into pieces and save operations. You get the point. Um, and though this will save a lot of operations and it will actually go down to, uh, I will explain the number where the number comes from in a second, into the 1.25, uh, 1.9559, and that's way smaller than n squared. So I have my plot here, how they grow. One of them is a log plot, meaning is that I scale the y-axis by a log. So I go up 10, 100, 1,000, 10 to the 4. And you, you can see here, this is a classical plot. It's just much faster. So you saved a lot of operations, just ridiculously number of operations. And I just showed you how it works uh, for the polynomials. Um, but for the multiplication, you just do the same. You just use, instead of the x uh, here, you just use some uh, k to the i uh, instead of x to the i, where you use kind of a, a p adic or a k adic extension. Like think of binary numbers, right? You do a binary extension. And in a binary extension, your numbers look like polynomials and you just run um, the same algorithm. Anyway, the point here is you can do much better. You can do much, much better, actually, uh, O to the uh, of n of 1.59. And since multiplication is kind of everywhere, this is just absolutely fabulous. So it takes a while until this really kicks in. So don't do that by hand. So you really need larger numbers. But still, it's, it's just absolutely fabulous. And it can do even better. So if you're wondering what the best uh, known algorithm is, it would be n log n. So that would be the best known multiplication algorithm would be in O of n log n, which is just ridiculously much faster um, than this n squared, which originally was conjectured. So that's just really, really fabulous. That's why I like the theorem. And maybe it's running in the background right now. So any computer algebra system nowadays uh, will have some version of it uh, built in. All right, now I have a nice illustration why this really gets so much faster. This uh, cutting the, the piece, the cake into pieces and into pieces and into pieces and so on. So let's do it. So if you do a classical multiplication, then it's just the square, right? So I'm ignoring additions here. It's really just the square and there's nothing you can do. It's just n squared. So perfect. But now we're doing this saving one operation per step, right? So I save one operation. So I have one white box here. But then I put it into itself, which is the whole point. So this box is already saved. And now I put again the, the same picture into itself and I've saved quite a few operations. I put the same picture into itself and put the same picture into itself. I put the same picture into itself. I put the same picture into itself. And after already five iterations, you can see that I'm much, much better than just filling out the whole square. And this is where the number comes from. The number is actually the fractal dimension of the object you see here and it's log three. So uh, the two log, applied to three, so two to the 1.59 is three. And this is where it comes from. And I think this is a really great illustration, which I obviously stole, the link is in the description. Um, so it, it really explains why this is so great. So you save one operation, but you put it in itself. So you get kind of this fractal picture that saves operation in operations, in operations, in operations. It's really great. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.